67 Kingdom of Diamonas. Welcome Alice, this is my domain, the Kingdom of Diamonas. You are free to go anywhere you want in the lower and middle areas of the kingdom. However while inside the castle gates you will need to be accompanied by one of my men. Lord Kira said as he walked her through the streets to the castle. Taking a moment to just lock around to find anything he may have been doing to deceive her, she was confused why everyone looked so happy and normal. Alice had always thought the demon people were a warring race she never took a moment to think about how the citizens lived. There is no way I could have done what Sauron wanted me to do, she thought seeing little kids playing just like any other race would be. Why, not live in peace with the rest of the world? Your people look happy, why must you cause so much suffering and fear for everyone else? Alice asked curiously as they passed through the castle gates. I wage war so my people will never know the pain of loss. I rule this land and aim to unite the world under my leadership. Yes I could simply just let the other races live in peace but the day will come when my people are targeted. I was shown a vision by the god I serve where my kingdom burned and I was killed. That is when I decided to eradicate the angels who had the elemental advantage over us. Now that they are gone I plan to conquer the world through their devotion to my god the demon race will thrive and war will no longer exist. Do you really think my goal is that bad? Lord Kira asked, dismissing the men following them. So you plan to wage war and kill in order to prevent war? That makes no sense you realize that right? Alice questioned. I do not expect you to understand me right away but in time you will come to realize my goal is not an evil one but one that would benefit the races across this world. Kira said as they walked through the entrance to his castle. I will never be okay with you wishing to harm others. Do your people even know of what you have been doing? Alice asked, trying to get as much information as she could. Enough. My people will never need to know of what goes on in other kingdoms. They have everything they need here. I have already conquered half the continent, I will send someone to take you and see how peaceful the people I have conquered live another day. For now I wish to introduce you to some people so be quiet and just follow me. Kira said, holding back his anger from the constant questions. Whatever, you say father. She replied with enough attitude to let him know she was not happy with his answers. Walking quietly next to him and following him to the throne room Alice carefully looked around looking for all the shadows and exit points she could see just in case Lord Kira had tried to capture her. I already know you're looking for ways to escape. I do not plan on shackling you, I can treat you as my daughter or I can treat you as a servant. The choice is yours. He said before opening the doors to his throne room. Treat me with respect and I will try to do the same. You have broken your promise to me once already if you remember. Alice replied. Hearing her words, he clenched his fist and walked to his throne, trying to hide his anger in front of Alice. Seeing their king walk into the room, showing such a scary face, they all need and looked down, fearful they would be killed if he caught them looking his way before sitting down. Seeing their expressions of fear, Alice knew the people in this room knew exactly how cruel Kira could be. Stand up. I am here today to introduce you all to my here, Alice de Majak. You all shall treat her with as much respect as you show me. I have given her the same status as one of my knights. As she is still untrusting of how we do things I will require one of you here to be her escort while inside the castle walls. Do I have any volunteers? Lord Kira asked. Standing up Kale stepped forward. I will do so. I already know Alice and I believe she will be more comfortable with me showing her around. Kale said now standing beside her. I will allow it. Do try to remember she is my daughter Kale. Lord Kira said, glaring at Kale who knew exactly what he meant by that. I will keep that in mind. Kale said, taking a knee again. Take her around the kingdom to meet the people, I wish for them to know of my daughter's return. I have business with the rest of you so stay where you are. Lord Kira said in a stern voice. Let's go. Alice said, walking out of the throne room not caring if Kale followed. Alice, wait. Kale said, catching up to her as she walked down the stairs trying to leave the castle. I really do not want to be here right now. Just follow me to the lower part of the kingdom. Alice said using a shadow to exit the castle and reappear where she saw the kids playing earlier. Mommy look, that lady used magic. A small kid walking with his mother said breaking free of her and running to Alice. That was so cool. What else can you do? Looking at the kid and his mother who looked a little concerned she crouched down and rubbed the kid's head. I can do a lot of things, you should ask your mom next time you want to run off though. Alice replied with a smile. Thank you. Come now Dimitri, we have to go, the mother said, taking the kid by his hand and leaving. You should be careful in this place Alice. If you were to tell anyone about their king's deeds then you would not be treated so well by him anymore. NYX said I figured as much. I just do not know what to do anymore now that I am here. 
Alice replied happy she was able to speak freely with NYX. Alice, please try to think of what will happen to me if you run off like that. Kale said, catching up to her. Relax, Kira knows that if I want to leave no one can stop me. Alice replied, that is where you are wrong. I cannot tell you much right now but if you try to leave it will be very bad for the people you love. Kale whispered, what do you mean? I have a blood oath with Kira, he cannot send people to the kingdom of Samaria. Alice replied, he had someone there before you made the oath. That is all I can say. Kale replied questly, I hate that man. Take me to meet with the people you told me about. Alice said coldly, we will have to meet with them another day. For now let's just take some time meeting the people of the kingdom down here like Kira wanted. Kale replied while jumping on top of the building next to them. Here, me, I am Kale, a knight that serves Lord Kira. I was sent here today to introduce you to Lord Kira's long lost daughter. Kale shouted from the rooftop drawing a crowd around them. Kale stop, Alice yelled back at him. Her name is Alice and she is Lord Kira's here. It is Lord Kira's wish that you all get to meet her. Kale shouted again as more people came out of their houses and shops to see what was going on. Getting annoyed with Kale just ignoring her she took out her wings and flew up to stand beside him. Smack slapping him Alice looked angry and flew back towards the castle. Seeing her fly away Kale felt his cheek and jumped after her. Alice what is wrong? He yelled out after her. Stopping in midair, do you think that is how I want to be introduced? I do not want people fearing me because I am some warlord's daughter? Alice replied angrily. No one there knows anything about that, they all love Lord Kira, he replied. Then, maybe I am not ready to be known as his daughter by anyone, Alice yelled before flying back to the castle as quickly as she could leaving Kale behind with no way to catch up. Reaching the castle Alice was stopped in her tracks and sent flying and crashing to the ground by Aban who had swatted her from the sky like a bug. I suggest if you want to keep any of your freedom you just follow along with what Lord Kira wants, otherwise not even I will be able to keep you safe. Aban said, offering her his hand to help her up. He will just have to give me some time to adjust then. Alice replied angrily. Time is something you won't have until Lord Kira trusts you. Aban said, taking his hand back and walking away. 68 Lord Kira and a lost love. Walking through the throne room's doors by the two demons escorting her Alice was left in the room all alone with Lord Kira. Why do you keep resisting me? Lord Kira asked curiously. I do not like to be caged nor do I like feeling helpless. It is who I am. Alice replied, you take after me a lot you know. I was once just as rebellious as you are with my parents. Maybe you would be a little happier if your mother was here. Lord Kira said, showing a weak side for once. You're right, if my mother was here I would be very happy. You drove her away though didn't you? Alice replied with a nasty tone. You think I wanted your mother to leave? All I wanted was a family to share in the happiness I will bring to the world, Lord Kira shouted loudly, gripping the arms of his chair hard, breaking them. Then why did she leave? Alice yelled back, getting sucked into the role she was playing. I sent her away. I am sorry for yelling. I think I know how to fix this, Lord Kira said standing up and walking over to Alice. Looking up at him with tears about to fall out of her eyes she replied, Oh yeah, just how do you plan on doing that father? by telling you the story of your mother and I and the reason she had to leave. Follow me and I will explain everything, Lord Kira said, walking past her and leaving the throne room. Following quietly Alice looked around and noticed not a soul was around, they must have left hearing Kira yell like that. She thought to herself. Standing outside a door Lord Kira pushed the door open slowly. This was supposed to be your room. Your mother and I had been trying to have a child for years. I had just gotten back from the war against the angels and feeling safe from the threat of the vision I was given we decided that it was the perfect time for us to be given the blessing of a child, Lord Kira said, looking sad. Alice couldn't find any good words to say so she stayed quiet. One day I had received word that a rebellion was building against me and that your mother was a target. Hearing this news I sent your mother away so that the people wishing to rebel against me would not kill her. It was the only thing I could do without knowing who my enemies are. The last thing I wanted to do was send her away especially when we were trying to have a child. I thought that I had done the right thing to keep her safe until I learned that years later she had died. That was around the time I lost the trust in my knight and all who served me. I have been a cruel man, I believed that I could bring eternal happiness to my people on my own and my wife would be happy in heaven, Lord Kira said letting a tear fall. Then, I learned that a powerful mage had come to light, I wanted to bring that mage to my side as someone to serve as a trusted aid in my goal. 
Someone who was not a demon and that could go from kingdom to kingdom and get the people to surrender to me without the need for bloodshed. As soon as I saw you, you reminded me so much of your mother, I felt like I had to get you back by all means I could come up with even if you hated me because I would have my daughter back even if she hated me, Lord Kira said, walking next to her and putting his hands on her shoulders. I am sorry that I did not just ask you to come to me as your father rather than trying to take you by force. Do you ever think you can forgive me? There is nothing I wouldn't do to have my daughter back as an actual daughter someone I can be happy to share in my victories with. Kira asked, looking like a father who had actually lost his daughter. How can I forgive you when you still have me restrained to this kingdom? NYX has already warned me of the demon waiting in Samaria. Alice said lying to keep Kale safe if things went wrong. I should not expect anything less from someone close to a goddess. I will tell the demon to come back home. Please forgive me, Lord Kira replied. When that demon returns I will tell you if I can forgive you. Thank you for telling me the story though. Alice replied feeling confused is it wrong of me to use him like this. Alice asked hoping NYX would reply. I will send word right away. However I will need you to send the message so my blood oath is not broken. Lord Kira replied. Do not feel bad for using a man such as him, Alice. NYX replied. What? Do you mean I am to send the message? Alice asked hoping it meant she could go back to Samaria. The Demon that I have hidden there is located at a shack in the woods next to the kingdom there. I will give you the location and you can go and get him. I am trusting you to leave and return. Lord Kira replied. Then, can I take a day extra to see my friends before I return? Alice asked, wanting to keep things civil like this. Yes, just return in two days time. He replied knowing it would make her happy to give her an extra day thank you. Alice said happily dot getting the location of the demon Alice took to the sky and flew back towards Samria as quick as she could reaching the shack the demon was in at almost no time at all in her excitement. Mr. Demon come on out, Kira has sent me to get you, Alice shouted as she landed next to it. Coming out of the shack a female demon in normal clothing stepped out in front of her. Why should I believe that Lord Kira has sent you of all people to come and get me princess? It is either go back or I send you into the void with no hope of escape. Alice replied coldly, fucking shadow users, fine, I will go back but if you are lying I will come back and destroy this place, she replied, threaten, me again and you won't be able to, Alice replied, taking out her scythe showing she would fight if she had to, whistling for her mount, a large bird with red feathers flew down beside her, see you soon princess, she said before flying away, with the demon gone Alice flew back to the kingdom of Samaria and landed in front of the Astala estate and ran inside where Shade was learning how to dance with one of the maids teaching him. Alice? Shade said, spinning the maid away and running to hug her. Are you learning to dance? Alice asked, feeling a little sorry for the maid who landed on her butt. Yumi said I should since she wants to bring me with her to a party another Nobel is throwing? He replied, happy to see her again. Sounds like you will have fun, when is it? She questioned. Tomorrow, you should come with us, Shade said, taking off up the stairs to find Yumi Duck coming back almost as fast as he left Shade was carrying Yumi over his shoulder and put her down next to Alice. Yumi look who came back, Shade said excitedly. Stop. Carrying me like that damn it I don't care who came to see me, Yumi yelled at Shade, annoyed. Looks like you two get along really well, Alice replied. Alice, Yumi said, turning around, Alice, she said, giving Alice a hug. I am only back for two days but I am happy to see you both. Alice said smiling. How? Are you even back? What happened? Yumi questioned. Some. Things have happened but I am able to come back for now which is all that matters. Alice replied. Mark. We'll probably have a heart attack hearing you are back. Yumi said, remembering how long it took him to tell her Alice had left for the demon kingdom. Yeah I kind of left him to tell you the news because I was too scared to say goodbye. I am really sorry Yumi. Alice said giving her another hug. You, said you're back for two days right? You have to come to the ball with us if you are really sorry then. Yumi said happily. Fine, I will go. I have nothing to wear a ball though. Alice said, thinking about the lack of clothing she owned. 69 ball at the Vince estate. While out shopping for a dress for Alice to wear she noticed a large number of nobles also out trying to buy extravagant outfits for the upcoming ball about to take place. Who, is holding the ball anyways? Alice said taking a long and slim black dress off the rack and holding it up against her body. That would be the Vaughn family, they hold the same rank as my father used to hold. They can be a little flashy but they are good people, Yumi said looking at some new dresses for herself. I think
think I have met their heir at the auction house before if I remember right, Alice said, picking up another long black dress with a deep cut in the back and no sleeves. That one is really pretty, you should go with that one, Yumi said seeing Alice hold the dress up. Liking the dress Alice nodded and took it to one of the store's employees to purchase the dress. The dress will be 398 silver coins, the employee said with a smile. For a dress? Alice questioned surprised. Yes, if you're not able to pay please put the dress back where you got it. She replied with a smile. Handing over the money Alice walked back over to Yumi feeling robbed. Let's go, I will go broke if I stay in here. Underscore 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 and you look so good in your dress. Yumi said admiring the way Alice's dress hugged her body and made her look like one of the models they would use to advertise the dress. You look good as well, where is Shade? Alice asked, waiting by the front door for her familiar to get done getting dressed. He is having issues so one of the maids is helping him put the clothes on. Yumi said she felt bad for the maid who got the job of helping the kid in an adult's body. Shade hurry up, or we are leaving. Alice yelled out impatiently. Hearing Alice yell, Shade ran out of a room close by with no shoes on or his jacket. Sorry, please wait, Shade said, trying to hurry. Just put the shoes on and forget the jacket. Alice said, leaving the estate knowing Shade would be able to catch up. Walking beside Yumi and Shade, she started to feel like this was a going away party. Who knows when the next time I will be able to see them again is. Alice looked at the both of them and enjoyed the sight of Yumi getting annoyed with Shade as they arrived at the party. Welcome, Miss Yumi, and Miss Alice. We are happy the both of you could make it here tonight. My name is Vince, the host of this evening's ball. I do hope you enjoy yourselves. Vince, a well-built and groomed man said greeting them at the door to the large estate. Thank you, we are happy to have received an invite. Yumi said, giving a curtsy before leading the way inside. Oh, and Miss Alice, my eldest son wishes to speak with you so please do give him some time if you happen to cross paths. Vince said moving his hand toward the door to let her through. I will be sure to keep that in mind. Thank you for having me. Alice replied and copied Yumi's curtsy. Entering the estate Alice felt out of place seeing all the colorful decorations and bright dresses the other women wore for the occasion. Don't worry too much about it, everyone here knows what to expect from your pick of color. Yumi said, noticing Alice looking at the others and then down at her own dress. Giving a nod Alice walked through the large breezeway with everyone else until they entered the ballroom which was decorated with the kingdom's colors and a statue in the middle of Vince and his family surrounding him. Walking over to the statue to read the words at the feet of the family she was stopped just short by a few of the noble sons of the kingdom. Miss Alice, would you do me the honor of a dance? I was here first, it would be a blessing from God if you graced me with a dance Alice. Try to think of Alice for a moment, do not surround her begging for a dance. Joseph Vaughn said, taking Alice's hand and pulling her away from the guys trying to ask her to dance. I am sorry to drag you away like that. My name is Joseph Vaughn the eldest son of the Vaughn family. May I have a word with you? Joseph asked, giving a polite bow. Your father mentioned you would like to have a word with me beforehand. What is it you want to talk to me about? Alice asked curiously. I want to ask you if you will teach me. My element is wind and from the stories I have heard the soldiers tell about you on the battlefield I would give anything to have you as my teacher, Joseph said nervously. I can dance with you, but I will not be able to be your teacher. I do not know much about the wind element yet, not enough to be someone's teacher yet anyway. I also will be leaving this kingdom very soon, Alice answered honestly, feeling a little bad for him. The king told me not to get my hopes up when asking you, it seems he was right. Joseph said, turning and leaving Alice alone in the corner. Looking around confused by his reaction Alice tried to find Yumi and Shade wanting to spend more time with them before she had to return to the demon kingdom. Miss Alice, it is so nice to see you here. Xion said happily running up to her and bowing to her. Please do not bow to me like this, Alice whispered, grabbing his arm and pulling him up. You had left so suddenly the last time we spoke. When we had all woken up from the ritual you had vanished without a trace. Please give me a divine order to take back to the church, Xion said, keeping his head bowed. Ugh, fine just pick your head up already, Alice replied, noticing people starting to stare at them. I will not lift my head until your words have been spoken, Xion insisted. Fine, just do for me what you would do for NYX, pick your head up already damn it, Alice replied not knowing what else to say very bold choice daughter. 
NYX chimed in hearing what Alice asked Xi'an to do, it would bring me joy to do so, Xi'an said before making his way quickly out of the ball. What? Did I just do? Alice asked, fearing the outcome now what Xi'an and the church does for me is pretty ancient. They go and find powerful monsters and sacrifice them in order to receive blessings from me. They will also begin to spread your name to others across the land in hopes of growing your power until you ascend to godhood the second part would actually help me out quite a bit. However, how in the world am I supposed to give them a blessing? Alice questioned before being interrupted by Vince. So, did you get a chance to talk with my son? Vince asked, joining Alice in the corner of the room where she had been standing silently by herself. Yes. He did not seem to like my answer though, Alice replied, still feeling confused. He is used to getting whatever he wants, getting told no every now and then will be good for him. I hope he was not rude to you, Vince said, waving one of the staff over to bring them a drink. Just a little, I wouldn't worry about it though, Alice said happily, taking the crystal glass and drinking the whole thing. Raising an eyebrow at the little girl downing the drink like it was nothing Vince did the same curious how good the drink was for her to do that. Cough 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 Vince started coughing at the burn in his throat from the alcoholic beverage. Are you okay? Alice asked. Yes, I am sorry. I just thought we may have been given a different drink. Vince replied, not wanting to admit defeat to a girl more than half his age. Anyway thank you for the drink, I really should be finding my friends. Alice said, giving a curtsy again and leaving to look for Yumi. Hey where have you been? Yumi said, seeing Alice look happy to find her and Shade. Just having a talk with Vince. Alice replied, Shade, seems to be really good at dancing. Yumi said, pointing out Shade who was dancing with Vince's wife drawing attention from everyone around. Dot trying to keep her jaw shut Alice looked at Shade who was dancing as if he was born to do so, he would masterfully spin and catch Jessica while not missing a beat. Just how much has he been practicing? Alice almost lost for words. Believe it or not, almost two days. His teacher wasn't even that good either if I am being honest. Yumi said a little jealousy at the speed Shade was able to pick up things. It really sucks. I have to leave this behind for a while. Alice said, looking sad knowing she would miss them both when she had to return to Kira. 69 ball at the Vaughn estate. While out shopping for a dress for Alice to wear she noticed a large number of nobles also out trying to buy extravagant outfits for the upcoming ball about to take place. Who is holding the ball anyways? Alice said taking a long and slim black dress off the rack and holding it up against her body. That would be the Vaughn family, they hold the same rank as my father used to hold. They can be a little flashy but they are good people, Yumi said looking at some new dresses for herself. I think I have met their heir at the auction house before if I remember right. Alice said, picking up another long black dress with a deep cut in the back and no sleeves. That one is really pretty, you should go with that one. Yumi said seeing Alice hold the dress up. Liking the dress Alice nodded and took it to one of the store's employees to purchase the dress. The dress will be 398 silver coins. The employee said with a smile. For a dress? Alice questioned surprised. Yes, if you're not able to pay please put the dress back where you got it. She replied with a smile. Handing over the money Alice walked back over to Yumi feeling robbed. Let's go, I will go broke if I stay in here. Underscore 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 and you look so good in your dress. Yumi said admiring the way Alice's dress hugged her body and made her look like one of the models they would use to advertise the dress. You look good as well, where is Shade? Alice asked, waiting by the front door for her familiar to get done getting dressed. He is having issues so one of the maids is helping him put the clothes on. Yumi said she felt bad for the maid who got the job of helping the kid in an adult's body. Shade hurry up, or we are leaving. Alice yelled out impatiently. Hearing Alice yell Shade ran out of a room close by with no shoes on or his jacket. Sorry please wait, Shade said, trying to hurry. Just put the shoes on and forget the jacket. Alice said leaving the estate knowing Shade would be able to catch up. Walking beside Yumi and Shade she started to feel like this was a going away party. Who knows when the next time I will be able to see them again is. Alice looked at the both of them and enjoyed the sight of Yumi getting annoyed with Shade as they arrived at the party. Welcome, Miss Yumi, and Miss Alice. We are happy the both of you could make it here tonight. My name is Vince, the host of this evening's ball. I do hope you enjoy yourselves. Vince, a well-built and groomed man said greeting them at the door to the large estate. Thank you. 
We are happy to have received an invite, Yumi said, giving a curtsy before leading the way inside. Oh, and Miss Alice, my eldest son wishes to speak with you so please do give him some time if you happen to cross paths, Vince said, moving his hand toward the door to let her through. I will be sure to keep that in mind. Thank you for having me. Alice replied and copied Yumi's curtsy. Entering the estate, Alice felt out of place seeing all the colorful decorations and bright dresses the other women wore for the occasion. Don't worry too much about it, everyone here knows what to expect from your pick of color, Yumi said, noticing Alice looking at the others and then down at her own dress. Giving a nod, Alice walked through the large breezeway with everyone else until they entered the ballroom, which was decorated with the kingdom's colors and a statue in the middle of Vince and his family surrounding him. Walking over to the statue to read the words at the feet of the family she was stopped just short by a few of the noble sons of the kingdom. Miss Alice, would you do me the honor of a dance? I was here first, it would be a blessing from God if you graced me with a dance Alice. Try to think of Alice for a moment, do not surround her begging for a dance. Joseph Vaughn said, taking Alice's hand and pulling her away from the guys trying to ask her to dance. I, am sorry to drag you away like that. My name is Joseph Vaughn the eldest son of the Vaughn family. May I have a word with you? Joseph asked, giving a polite bow. Your father mentioned you would like to have a word with me beforehand. What is it you want to talk to me about? Alice asked curiously. I want to ask you if you will teach me. My element is wind and from the stories I have heard the soldiers tell about you on the battlefield I would give anything to have you as my teacher. Joseph said nervously. I can dance with you, but I will not be able to be your teacher. I do not know much about the wind element yet, not enough to be someone's teacher yet anyway. I also will be leaving this kingdom very soon. Alice answered honestly, feeling a little bad for him. The king told me not to get my hopes up when asking you, it seems he was right. Joseph said, turning and leaving Alice alone in the corner. Looking around confused by his reaction Alice tried to find Yumi and Shade wanting to spend more time with them before she had to return to the demon kingdom. Miss Alice? It is so nice to see you here. Xion said happily running up to her and bowing to her. Please do not bow to me like this. Alice whispered, grabbing his arm and pulling him up. You had left so suddenly the last time we spoke. When we had all woken up from the ritual you had vanished without a trace. Please give me a divine order to take back to the church. Xion said, keeping his head bowed. Ugh, fine just pick your head up already. Alice replied, noticing people starting to stare at them. I will not lift my head until your words have been spoken. Xi'an insisted. Fine, just do for me what you would do for NYX, pick your head up already damn it. Alice replied not knowing what else to say very bold choice daughter. NYX chimed in hearing what Alice asked Xi'an to do. It would bring me joy to do so, Xi'an said before making his way quickly out of the ball. What did I just do? Alice asked, fearing the outcome now what Xi'an and the church does for me is pretty ancient. They go and find powerful monsters and sacrifice them in order to receive blessings from me. They will also begin to spread your name to others across the land in hopes of growing your power until you ascend to godhood the second part would actually help me out quite a bit. However, how in the world am I supposed to give them a blessing? Alice questioned before being interrupted by Vince. So, did you get a chance to talk with my son? Vince asked, joining Alice in the corner of the room where she had been standing silently by herself. Yes. He did not seem to like my answer though, Alice replied, still feeling confused. He is used to getting whatever he wants, getting told no every now and then will be good for him. I hope he was not rude to you, Vince said, waving one of the staff over to bring them a drink. Just a little, I wouldn't worry about it though, Alice said happily, taking the crystal glass and drinking the whole thing. Raising an eyebrow at the little girl downing the drink like it was nothing Vince did the same curious how good the drink was for her to do that. Cough 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 Vince started coughing at the burn in his throat from the alcoholic beverage. Are you okay? Alice asked. Yes, I am sorry. I just thought we may have been given a different drink. Vince replied, not wanting to admit defeat to a girl more than half his age. Anyway thank you for the drink, I really should be finding my friends. Alice said, giving a curtsy again and leaving to look for Yumi. Hey where have you been? Yumi said, seeing Alice look happy to find her and shade. Just having a talk with Vince. Alice replied, Shade, seems to be really good at dancing. Yumi said, pointing out Shade who was dancing with Vince's wife drawing attention from everyone around. Trying to keep her jaw shut Alice looked at Shade who was dancing as if he was born to do so, he would masterfully spin and catch Jessica while not missing a beat. Just how much has he been practicing? Alice almost lost for words. 
believe it or not almost two days his teacher wasn't even that good either if i am being honest yumi said a little jealousy at the speed shade was able to pick up things it really sucks i have to leave this behind for a while alice said looking sad knowing she would miss them both when she had to return to kira 70 era let us all applaud the young man for the spectacular show just now vince said clapping as he walked over to his wife as the music died down it was a lot of fun thank you for dancing with me shade said giving a polite bow to his dance partner and returning to alice and yumi who were still slightly in shock by the spectacle they just witnessed dancing is really easy why can't you do it shade whispered to yumi who replied by punching him in the arm as hard as she could be nice shade you have to teach her to dance as good as you do now alice replied trying not to laugh like hell i will let him dance with me yumi said annoyed you are right she would have to be able to dance for me to dance with her shade replied with a grin okay okay be good you too yumi we should head back i have to go see my mom while i have the chance alice replied hoping she would be able to see nyx just as much when she goes back to lord kira all right you can head back without me i still have to meet with people and uphold my appearance as my father's successor yumi replied before giving alice a hug and walking over to speak with some of her father's friends come on shade let's leave yumi for her business alice said taking his hand and leaving the ball to go back to the astala estate walking out of the ball alice and shade were both transported to nyx's domain alice where is this shade said nervously looking around getting ready to attack if he needed to relax nyx must have brought us here just follow me and do not touch anything alice replied leading the way to nyx's home emergency quest leave the realm of the gods reward and slash a mom alice yelled out running towards nyx's home worried seeing the system quest pop up randomly alice i don't think we should go i have a really bad feeling about this shade said taking a step back and pulling alice's hand to stop her then go back home alice yelled taking shade back to the estate as quickly as she could before returning to nyx's domain running up to nyx's house she ignored the repeated notifications telling her to leave the realm bursting through the front doors of the house alice fell to her knees under the bone shattering pressure she felt from inside mom where are you alice used telepathy to try to reach nyx alice leave now nyx yelled out sounding scared not until yo alice tried saying before getting hit with more pressure causing her to lay flat on the ground barely able to move anymore hearing slow steps coming her way from around the corner alice tried her hardest to get back up only to feel her leg break from trying to move gay alice yelled out in pain what do we have here a short woman with bright red hair said as she walked over to alice who was getting close to losing consciousness oh right lower life forms cannot do much in the presence of a high god haha <laughs> silly me the woman said pulling in her pressure and letting alice breath normally again oh a demigod how interesting i must have been asleep for quite a while if i missed such a rare occasion my name is era do tell me your name child era said tilting her head to the side waiting on alice to respond where is my mom alice asked in pain from her leg which felt like it was shattered to dust did you not hear my question seems i need to educate you era said picking alice off the ground by her throat almost crushing it last chance what is your name i really do not like asking things twice i suggest you answer this time era said with a serious face algse alice tried saying through her grip Moving her hand to the side era sent Alice crashing into a marble pillar breaking it in half. M.Y. N.A.M.E.I. Alcee Alice tried saying, wishing she had listened to the system's quest to leave the realm. Was that really so hard? Era said, withdrawing all of her pressure and walking over to Alice who was trying to muster up the strength to escape through her shadow. Sinking into her shadow as fast as she could Alice tried to leave only to be pulled back out by Era who seemed even more furious that Alice had tried to leave before she was done with her. I did not give you permission to leave. Sit. Era said, annoyed shoving Alice back onto the ground letting her know leaving was futile. Please. Era, I beg you to let my daughter go. She has nothing to do with this. NYX said, panicked as she limped out of a shadow nearby. Tilting her head back to see NYX, Era smirked. This little one did mention she was your child didn't she? What a great opportunity. Era said now looking at Alice like she was going to devour her. Seeing the look in Era's eyes she felt fear that penetrated her to the core causing Alice to start quivering. Please, I will do anything just let her go. NYX said, trying to rush over to Era. Take. Another step and your little girl will no longer have a head. 
Era said in a low tone just loud enough for NYX to hear her dut stopping in her tracks NYX fell to her knees. Please, don't you think you have had your fun yet Era? The grudge you have against NYX has lasted since the Great War of Power, a tall slender man covered in flames said, walking through the doors. Shut up Joral, this is none of your business. Era replied, tossing Alice to the side and stepping up to Joral who smiled. Consider, this the favor I owe you NYX. Come with me and leave NYX and Alice alone. We have much to talk about now that you have woken up. Joral said, putting his hand on Era's shoulder and vanishing. Alice? NYX yelled out limping over to Alice as fast as she could. What just happened? Who was that? Alice questioned, still holding back the tears from all the pain she was in. Her. Name is Era. She is a higher god who has a grudge against me for taking the man she loved from her. That isn't important right now. We need to get you to Jun so he can help you heal. NYX said using what strength she could to take them to Jun's place where her and Alice fell to the ground underscore 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 on in circles in the lobby of the estate. Shade was trying not to panic and cause a scene for Yumi as he could feel Alice was seriously injured. Fuck. The ball. Shade said before rushing out of the estate to go and find Yumi. Stopping at the gates, Shade started to walk back. Yumi will just worry, there is nothing she or I can do to help Alice right now, anyway. Shade thought to himself, struggling with what to do. Yumi, I have to leave for a little while with Alice. I will be back soon, I promise. Shade said, using telepathy to let her know he was leaving. Going back to his true form, Shade began running at full speed towards the Demon Kingdom to let them know Alice may not be back in the time given to her. Jumping from shadow to shadow he made good time making it to the demon's borders. Seeing demons ahead of him getting ready to attack him Shade jumped up returning to his human form. Wait, I need to see the demon lord Kira right now, it concerns his daughter. Shade said as the demons took him to the ground and bound his hands. What, do you think we should do? What if he really does have information about her? One of the demons said while picking him up and wrapping a cloth around Shade's waist. If... We take him to the castle we will be able to see our families a little early so why not just bring him? The other demon replied. That's right I am her familiar if you take me to see the demon king you will get to see your family sooner? Shade said, trying to get them to hurry up and take him to the castle. Whatever, if he ends up lying Lord Kira will probably just eat the beast. Ha ha ha, yeah you're right. Alright buddy let's go. Hearing their words Shade started sweating still not knowing if the Demon King was as scary of a person as he was thinking he was. 71 Shade meets Kira. Being thrown into a cell, Shade was tempted to escape and just try to find the Demon King but was stopped when the guard who threw him in decided to take a seat next to his cell. So, tell me, what information do you have for Lord Kira? Just so you know it better be very good otherwise he may lose his temper with you. He asked, turning his chair to face Shade. I... I'm connected to Alice with a blood contract. Recently we were pulled to the realm of the gods for some reason and I felt a very strong presence which was clearly hostile. Worried for NYX, Alice wanted to run into the house which NYX resides in. Not wanting her to go I tried to stop her which made Alice mad. She took me back to the mortal realm and went back to see NYX. Shortly after that I could feel that Alice's life force was very weak meaning she was injured. I know that she is supposed to return to Kira but things may be out of her control right now. I came to inform Kira of this so that he would not be angry when she did not return within the time he gave her. Shade replied, still worried for Alice. You, mean to tell me that my daughter can freely traverse between the realms? Lord Kira said, stepping around the corner revealing himself. It, is something she has been allowed to do by NYX, that is all I know. Shade replied with a quick wit. Tell, me, beast, why should I believe you? Lord Kira said now standing in front of Shade. Because. I came to your territory knowing I might be killed for giving you this information. Alice is my master and if I have to give my life for her I will gladly do so. Shade said looking Lord Kira in the eyes. Sigh. Let the beast out of its cage. You will stay with me until Alice returns. I have a few more questions I wish to ask you in private. Lord Kira said, turning around and walking up the stairs to leave the prison duck catching back up to Lord Kira. Shade walked quietly behind him trying to hide how nervous he was feeling Lord Kira's enormous power hidden within. How, is it that you have a human form? Lord Kira asked as they walked towards the castle. When, NYX came to our realm she gave me this form as a gift for my loyalty to Alice. I do not know much more than that. Shade replied, trying to keep Alice being NYX's daughter a secret. I, 
See, can you feel where Alice is now? Lord Kira questioned. I can only feel that she is slowly recovering in the realm of the gods. Shade replied honestly as Lord Kira led him into the throne room for the rest of their chat underscore 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 on June please help me heal Alice, I am a little beaten up right now so I cannot do a whole lot to help her right now, NYX asked as June came out of his home, what, in the world happened to you two? June asked curiously, seeing NYX in such bad shape. Era, she has woken up from her slumber. NYX replied quietly as June poured a shining liquid into Alice's mouth to help her heal. It would seem that Sauron may be next in line for a beating then. June said, wondering if Sauron would even be able to survive Era's wrath in his current position. The only good thing that has ever come from Sauron is Alice. I do not care much for what will happen to him. I just really hope that Era's actions do not disturb the Supreme. NYX replied shivering at the thought of the Supreme being awakened by petty dealings. That would be very bad, June said, handing the rest of the bottle to NYX as Alice's bruises and broken bones began to heal. June, this is your power of belief. I cannot take any from you, NYX said looking at June who just smiled. Relax, it is a very small amount, for Alice it will heal her right away. For you it will help you to speed up your recovery. You can just pay me back later. June said motioning for her to drink up. June, what is going on? Alice said waking up feeling good as new. You, got caught up in your mother's affairs, you don't remember? June asked curiously. No, I remember that crazy short lady beating me. I just don't know why I am here or why I am completely healed. Alice said, sitting up and hugging NYX who had just finished drinking. Are, you okay? Alice asked looking at NYX who still looked like she went through a rough beating. I will be fine hun, but you should really head back to the mortal realm. The realm of the gods will be pretty lively for a while and it is best you're not here for it. NYX said, touching her shoulder lightly sending Alice back to the mortal realm. Appearing where she and Shade had first been taken from near the Vaughn estate she noticed how torn her dress was. Using the Shadow Monarch's ring she quickly made sure to change back into her normal clothes before anyone could realize she was back. Shade I am sorry for sending you back, I should have listened to you. Alice said using her telepathy it is okay, but I am here with Kira at the moment. Can you please come back? Kira is questioning everything and I do not know how much longer I can keep him from finding out more about you than he should know. Shade replied I will be there soon, just let him know that I am on the way. Alice replied pulling out her wings and taking to the sky quickly. Flying as fast as she could not knowing what Kira would be able to get out of shade regarding her true relationship with NYX and how she was allowed into the realm of the gods. If things get dangerous just stay in the shadows until I get back. Alice said worried for her friend I do not think you need to worry about that. Kira seems pretty pleased to know you are returning as we speak. He is going to get some food for us to share. Shade said seeming more relaxed. Quickly flying over Kira's gates she landed in front of his castle where the surrounding demons bowed their heads to her as she walked by. Feeling where Shade was she used the shadows to enter the same room as him only to be met with the sight of Shade stuffing his face with an assortment of meats that had been laid out on the table in front of him. Good. To see you are alright. Alice said feeling silly for even being worried after seeing him like that. Welcome. Home Alice, take a seat with us and eat. I am sure you must be hungry after traveling to and from the realm of the gods. Lord Kira said giving Alice a calculating look. I was forkfully brought there for some reason, however I am able to go to NYX's domain through my shadow element. Alice replied, Shade, had told me that you were gravely injured, how is it you look even healthier than when you left if that was the case? Lord Kira questioned. I was injured, some of my bones had shattered thanks to a certain god. With that said, gods can heal any injury they want to other than death. Is it really that surprising given my personal relationship with NYX? Alice replied knowing Lord Kira would have no way of confirming what she said. I suppose you are right, I am happy to see that you are unharmed now though, Lord Kira said taking some food for himself. So, when do you plan to introduce me to NYX? I assume that is something within your power seeing how you can bring shade back to our realm, Lord Kira said giving a serious look before taking a drink. It is up to NYX if I can bring you or introduce you to her, would the god you worship not be mad at you for wanting to meet with a god other than him? Alice asked. I wouldn't know. I do however know that I stand a good chance at meeting with an actual god now that you are here. 
If I happen to receive some benefit who knows what I might do, Lord Kira said assuming Alice would tell NYX of his interest in her. I will tell NYX, that is the most I can do for you. Why do you wish to meet with her so bad? Alice asked as they both ignored Shade who had nearly eaten all the food on the table by this time. You could say that I have a way of increasing my own power that would require coming face to face with a god. Lord Kira said with a smile. 72 Key of the Monarch. Mom, are you okay? Alice asked, still worried about NYX who was in rough shape the last time she saw her. I am fine now, the higher gods are becoming more active lately so you should wait a while before coming back. NYX replied, hiding the fact she was still injured. I have a question, Kira is being very persistent about meeting you. He said he can increase his own power if he comes face to face with an god. What does he mean by that? Alice asked, still curious about Lord Kira's words yesterday. If that is the case then he will never meet with me. What he is referring to is an abomination. I assume he has the dagger his god used when the gods lived in the mortal realm. It has the ability to drain a god of their power and transfer it to the wielder for a short period of time. However I have heard that some of the power will remain with the wielder for as long as they have possession of the dagger. NYX replied you cannot meet Kira. Alice said stubbornly don't be a brat, I have said from the start I refuse to meet him, in any case I must take a nap so you will not be able to talk with me for a while. Be careful, NYX said before entering a state of hibernation to completely recover from her wounds. Finding out what Lord Kira meant, Alice decided it was best to try to see the rest of the world in order to grow her own power and eliminate the constant pestering to meet NYX from Lord Kira. Finding him in the throne room surrounded by his advisors and knights Alice quietly took a seat on one of the steps until she could find a chance to talk with him. Lord. Kira, if we want to finish taking the continent we must continue with our efforts. I do not see why you refuse to conquer Samaria and the kingdoms beyond it. One of the advisors, a stocky man with a red beard and a bald head said as kindly as he could. I agree with Dusty, Lord Kira. We need to be proactive and finish your will in order to finally achieve your dream. A knight who wore black armor and had a claymore strapped to his back said. I have an agreement with my daughter to not step foot there or to send my men that way. Do you plan to make me a liar after I have finally gotten her back? We will leave them alone for now and when the time comes my daughter will go and bring them under my rule peacefully. There shall be no more talk of the kingdoms to the east. Now go back to your normal duties and leave me to have a word with my daughter. Lord Kira replied sternly. You did not tell them of the oath? Alice asked after seeing the last of the men leave the throne room, to be sure they would not be able to hear her. That is something they do not need to know. I am happy you came to see me. Would you care to join me for the rest of my meetings today? Lord Kira replied, seeming to be quite happy. That sounds really boring to be honest. I did have a question though, I was wondering if I could go see the other kingdoms you have conquered. I only ask because I am not very good at sitting still, I also want to train more and get stronger. Alice asked, I think that is a great idea, you will be able to see how happy people are under my rule. Hopefully you will come to trust me more seeing that I am not the dictator you think I am. Lord Kira said standing from the throne and motioning for her to follow him. Following Kira quietly she was feeling a little weird seeing him act so cheerful. Where are we going? I am taking you to the storage room so you can pick some things to make your travels easier. I can't let my daughter go out into the world not prepared can I? Lord Kira replied happily it is so weird seeing him so happy. Alice thought to herself as they arrived at the storage room which was protected by six guards and had chains locking the door shut. Open. The room for us. Lord Kira commanded the men standing guard. As soon as the chains hit the floor the doors opened revealing a huge room with countless rows of shelves holding various weapons and items that Lord Kira had collected or taken over the years of his rule. You can take anything you see here that you think might be of use to you in your travels, I will go and get you some money to take with you so that you can buy anything you may need. Lord Kira said before leaving Alice alone in the room full of treasures. Looking around, Alice couldn't help but to think the sight was impressive as she walked through the aisles of shelves and occasionally picked up a weapon before putting it back down, remembering she already had a weapon that was better than what was in the room. Getting a little bored, Alice came across a small box on a shelf by itself. Walking over and opening the box, she was slightly surprised to find that it contained a black key that began vibrating when she picked it up. It seems you have found a rather important item. Lord Kira replied, noticing the key reacting to her. What? Does this key unlock? Alice asked curiously. When? I found the key a local villager had told me of a story surrounding the key. There used to be a very powerful man long ago, it is said that he had enough power to rival some gods. 
he could shroud entire kingdoms in utter darkness to the point you would not be able to see or hear a thing leaving some of his enemies to go mad after being trapped in that state. The villager referred to him as the Shadow Monarch. The key supposedly will unlock the Shadow Monarch's home if it is ever found, allowing the person to inherit the Shadow Monarch's power and spells. Once I heard this I knew that this key was worth holding onto. I have sent countless men to search all over the planet for the monarch's home and none have succeeded over the years. I even went back to find the old man who told me the story only to find he had died the day after I left the village. The key reacted to you so if anyone has a chance of finding his home and gaining his power I believe it will be you. Lord Kira said, picking the box up and handing it to her for her to keep. Thank. You. What took you so long anyways? A few gold would last me for a long while. Alice said taking advantage of the perks of the demon king believing she was his daughter. Nonsense, the world is vast and there are many places you do not know of yet. If you hope to compete with the people of Dunmar at the auction house there you will need more than a few gold. Lord Kira said, handing her a large bag which almost hit the ground when he handed it to Alice. Just what did you put in the bag? Alice said, surprised by its weight. There are around 75 holy coins and a badge displaying my family crest in the bag. If you ever find yourself in trouble you can show the badge and no one will mess with you any further. Or you can wear the badge and use it as a show of power, my soldiers will listen to your command upon seeing it as well. Be sure not to abuse it, I would hate to have to come get you. Lord Kira replied that having stopped listening after hearing the amount of holy coins in the bag Alice struggled to bring herself back to the conversation with such a shock. Alice was now the most wealthy person she knows of. Why would you give me all of your money? Alice asked assuming there was no way he could have more money than what he had just given her. Ha ha ha, that is only a small part of my wealthy child giving you this much will be just fine so don't worry about me. Lord Kira said laughing at the thought of that small amount of money being all he had. I almost forgot to tell you, the monsters and the people on this side of the world are far stronger than the ones you have faced so far so I will be sending someone to keep you safe. Lord Kira said only to be greeted with a pout from Alice. Do I really seem that weak to you? Would you have accepted a babysitter when you were my age? Alice said, really not wanting to be tied down to someone who wouldn't be able to keep up with her pace when it comes to traveling. You really do take after me don't you? Fine, but keep to the skies until you reach a settlement or kingdom. Don't do anything dangerous until you get used to how things are. Lord Kira said, putting his hand on her shoulder and pulling her in for a hug. 73 Sora takes fly. Wait for me? Shade said running over to join Alice outside the castle where Lord Kira, Kale and some other demons had gathered to see Alice off. It would not be wise to bring your familiar with you Alice, at least not yet. He would not be of very much help to you, in fact he may very well slow you down. If you want I can have him trained here with my best knights until he is strong enough to hold his own and not be a burden, Lord Kira said, trying to help her out. He is right, Shade. You should stay and train I am sure that father will do his best in order to help you gain strength. Not to mention I still want you to help look after Yumi. Next time I go to the realm of the gods I can always have NYX send me back to see you and Yumi before going back to my journey. Alice said running over and hugging Shade tight not wanting to leave him behind but knowing if Lord Kira was right that Shade would be in danger almost all of the time. If that is what you want. Shade said, hugging her lightly back feeling like a burden. You should get going while the sun is still up. With the money alone your travel time will be much slower than normal Lord Kira said, handing her things to her for her to carry. Taking the large bag Alice deposited it into her system storage. It shouldn't be a issue now, she replied with a smile and took off into the sky before anyone could ask any questions. Flying in the air high above the kingdom she took a brief moment to look back at the direction of Samaria before flying past Kira's kingdom and towards the mountains that seemed to divide the land completely. Not caring to look around very much Alice sped up and punched through the clouds above the mountains. Coming out of a cloud her eyes widened to see a vast valley below her with waterfalls on the left and numerous monsters all around on the ground below as if no one has ever hunted them. Getting distracted by the sight Alice narrowly avoided getting hit by a large bird similar to Kale's familiar. Not caring to fight with anything just yet Alice started flying as fast as she could, to her surprise the bird was not very far behind her chasing her down. Pushing her speed to the limits she flapped her wings hard causing the air to explode with a boom behind her as she accelerated her speed using her mana to give her wings a boost. Looking forward Alice was forced to use her wind element to prevent the air from hurting her at this speed. Finally adjusting to the speed she was flying Alice began to realize the difference between a mortal and a demigod. 
I wonder how many years it would have taken me to reach this level of speed before becoming a demigod. She thought before seeing smoke coming from the ground a ways ahead of her. Withdrawing her wings, Alice used the momentum of her flight to send her rocketing through the sky towards the smoke as it got close with every passing second. Seeing a small number of people come rushing out of the houses with their weapons drawn in her direction, Alice took her wings back out and stopped just short of their village and slowly landed on the ground, putting her wings back up. I do not want to fight, I come from the other side of the mountains and just want some directions to the nearest kingdom, Alice said putting her hands up showing she didn't want to fight with her actions. I am sorry for drawing our weapons on you. We only knew that a large amount of mana was headed out direction at an incredible speed. To answer your question the nearest kingdom would be Jurgen it is about four days travel from here. One of the men said, putting his sword back in its sheath. For you that means a few hours at most haha. One of the women said, pulling her gauntlets off and walking over to Alice to get a closer look. I just recently learned I could travel that quick as well. My name is Alice. What race are you Alice? You look human but fly like an angel, have the mana of a demon and I cannot see any of your information even with my goddess's blessing. The woman said, walking around Alice trying to figure her out. I am human. Alice replied nervously. Then, who is your god? She asked, still not introducing herself. NYX. Alice replied with a smile. What is your status as her follower? She asked again. I am her apostille. What is with all of the questions? Alice replied, getting a little annoyed. Hara, leave the girl alone. It is natural you cannot read her if she has that high of a rank with a mid-tier goddess. I am Alan, I am sorry if my daughter has troubled you with her rude behavior. Alan said, walking over and shaking her hand. It's alright, this is my first time to cross the mountains so I still don't know what to expect. Alice replied, NYX has a temple in Jurgen which is growing in popularity lately since there has been news of NYX having a daughter. They are even in the process of adding a statue of her next to NYX as we speak. If you would like we could take you to Jurgen with us, we should be heading out in a few days, Alan said, offering their assistance to her. That sounds great, thank you so much, Alice said happily. Oh, that reminds me, Sora, get out here and pay respects to your envoy, Alan turned shouting at one of the buildings. NYX what do I do? Alice tried asking in a panic not knowing how to act. Not hearing a response she remembered that NYX was going to be out of contact for a while. Looking over at the building she saw a young girl around the age of 7 or 8 with black hair and blue eyes come out and run over. She is NYX's envoy? She looked up at her and back at her father. Crouching down, that's right. Your name is Sora right? It is very nice to meet you. I am Alice. Alice said with a smile trying to be as friendly as she could. The Reason we are going to Jurgen is so Sora can receive her first blessing from NYX. Sora makes sure to treat Alice well, okay, she is just like Arnold is for me and Hara. Alan said, rubbing his daughter's head. It is very nice to meet you, Miss Alice. Sora said with a little wobbly curtsy. What made you pick NYX as your goddess? Alice said, still at eye level with Sora. Um. My hair is black and so is NYX's and I like to sleep when it is dark outside and NYX makes it dark. And um, Sora said listing off all the small little reasons that made her pick NYX as her goddess. That's very cute, wanna know something cool? Alice said, finding the little girl adorable. Yeah, NYX said just now that I should give you a reward, would you like to fly like a bird? Alice asked with a smile. Like a bird? Not like when my daddy picks me up and runs around? Sora asked curiously. Standing up Alice slowly took out her wings and offered Sora her hand. Like a bird? Sounds like fun doesn't it? Alice we could not ask you to give her such good treatment. Alan said, showing he was a little worried. I, wanna go. Sora said looking at her father pouting. I promise she will be safe, don't worry. Alice said, waiting for Alan to give his daughter permission. Fine, just not too high and please stay in sight. Alan said, giving in to the pressure to make his daughter happy. Yai yeah, yeah, Sora said, running over and jumping up for Alice to catch her. Hold. On tight okay Sora. Alice said, wrapping her arms around Sora and picking her up before slowly flying off the ground and over Alan and Hara's heads. Higher. Higher? Sora yelled out looking around excited to be in the air hovering above her house. I promised your father I wouldn't go to high Sora. Alice replied, flying her in circles around the house enjoying seeing Sora so happy and excited. Maybe. Sora really did make the right pick. Hara said watching her little sister fly around with Alice happily before they landed again next to them. Thank you. 
Hara said before taking Sora to go take a bath. I will go make a camp in the forest for now, I will come back in the morning. Alice said not wanting to force them to let her stay in one of their houses. Nonsense, stay with us for now. I think Sora would hate me if she came back and you were gone. Alan said, looking worn out without doing anything. She is a good girl, you are a good father. Alice said with a smile. 74 Hunting the Flame Boar Alice, would you like to join us on a hunt before we set out? The materials can be sold for profit in the Jurgen. Alan asked while strapping his armor on. Sure. That sounds like fun, let me know if I hold you back any. Alice said with a smile thinking it has been a while since she last went to fight with monsters. I am sure we would be the ones who hold you back, you are an envoy after all. Hara said jumping up and down with a relaxed posture to get warmed up for the day. How do you fight? I am curious. Hara asked, now doing some stretches. I use a scythe as well as some elemental spells. I can do whatever is needed so just let me know, Alice said while pulling her scythe out of her inventory to show them. What an ominous aura. Alan said looking at Alice's weapon. How about a quick spar before we go out so we know what her strengths are? Joey, another stocky man that carried a large shield and short sword said standing up and joining the group. I am fine with that. Alice said, happy to prove herself to them. Since I have the best defense out of all of us, why don't you try attacking me? Do not be afraid to give it your best shot. Joey said, raising his shield and getting in a low stance ready for her to attack. Don't blink. Alice said, twirling her scythe in one hand and using Rift Warp to instantly get behind him letting her swing the blunt end of her weapon at his legs. Barely able to keep pace Joey rolled forward and made eye contact with Alice now aware he should take the spar a little more seriously. Seeing him at the ready Alice decided she would try out the skill she got when she became a demigod. Looking serious she whispered dead of night which immediately caused all the light in the surrounding area to begin being sucked towards Alice as if the world itself was being sucked in by her. Trying to keep his composure by the unreal sight he was witnessing Joey used a skill of his own to protect from being killed by magic attacks. Before he knew it he was not able to see anything at all. His shield that was inches from his face was completely out of sight, the ground below him and all had gone. All that was left was his consciousness. Daddy? Where are you? Sora yelled out not being able to see anything causing her to start panicking. Hearing Sora freaking out Alice quickly released the ability and restored the light to the area and ran over to Sora who was crying with her knees tucked up to her chest on the ground. I am so sorry Sora, are you okay? Alice asked, unaware of how fond she was of the little girl. Don't cry Sora everything is okay, Alan said, picking her up and giving her a hug and bringing her inside to try and make her feel better. I didn't mean to scare her, Alice said softly, feeling guilty. Don't feel too bad about it. Sora has always been frightened easily, Hara said after noticing how bad Alice felt for it. Joey, are you okay? Hara turned to see Joey who was still standing on guard just realizing that his sight had returned. Yeah, I ended up stuck in my thoughts. Joey replied remembering the feeling of Alice's blade at the back of his neck before she ran to check on Sora. Well it looks like you are plenty capable of handling yourself. However if you used that on a hunt we all might die, not being able to see our prey could end up making us prey instead. Hara said before going to say goodbye to Sora. Waiting outside, Alice looked up at the sky, wondering if she made the right choice staying with the group rather than just flying around until she found one of the kingdoms on this side of the world. Putting her scythe away, she summoned the grimoire to do some reading while they all checked on Sora. Are you ready to go on the hunt? Alan said, with the others following behind him as they exited the house, walking over to her. Yeah, I am good to go. Alice replied, letting her grimoire disappear like she normally would when reading it. Just beyond the tree lean right there should be a few wild flame boar. If you have not faced them yet then just sit back and watch until you catch on how to fight them. Joey said as they led the way into the forest. I have been meaning to ask this but what happened when Lord Kira took control of this land? Alice asked as they walked through the trees. I guess things might be different over the mountains if you do not know about it. Some kingdoms here fought back and others just used diplomacy to avoid bloodshed. In my opinion demon Lord Kira was insanely lucky in how things played out here. Jurgen being the closest kingdom to his own fought back and was only beaten by a small margin. Once he occupied Jurgen he didn't really change anything about how the people lived. All he requires is a yearly tax and the treatment of his men is good. However after Jorgen's change in leadership the other kingdoms heard of this. Some just sent the yearly tax to him in exchange for him staying away and others joined forces to try to stop him. Just before the other kingdoms planned their attack they received news of the angel's downfall. 
This news struck fear in many of the warriors and as such their morale fell before the war even started. Seeing this fall in morale Lord Kira moved his forces quickly and took advantage of the chaos. He held a joint meeting with all of the kings and offered them terms of peace as long as they recognize him as the supreme ruler of the land. The thing about it is that since he largely stays out of people's way and sets terms of an end to war and civil conflicts between the kingdoms everyone pretty much just lets him do what he wants. If I had to offer an opinion about the man honestly I think he might be the most successful diplomat and king in history. The yearly tax can be harsh but you are not without ways of paying as well if you cannot pay you have the option to join his army and have your family's taxes waived. Alan replied as they came upon some tracks on the ground created by the monsters they are hunting. That is much different than what I had expected to hear. Alice said softly as not to alert the monsters in the area. He was cruel to his enemies but showed kindness and fair treatment to those who chose to take his side. With him not living on this side of the world it is much easier for the kingdoms to just pay him to stay away. However if he tries to push back any more than what he has currently I have heard rumors of a secret faction to completely wipe out his armies and kingdom. You as an envoy will probably be invited to join this faction once word of your arrival reaches the other envoys. Lord Kira may have a powerful army but do you think he could survive an attack of the gods envoys joined together? That amount of power alone could probably wipe out much of the land. You yourself have the power to drown your enemies in darkness and despair whoever you turned your blade at would have no choice other than to present their neck for you to take. Alan replied again while taking out his weapon as they came into sight of the flame boar which was eating another monster it had killed. Stay back and support us if you see a chance to do such. Joey said quietly before charging forward and ramming his large shield into the beast's side, sending it rolling to the side. Ruaweo error. The flame boar yelled with a small cloud of smoke leaving its mouth as its fur looked like it was catching fire. Dut giving a shout of his own Joey drew the boar's attention while Hara and Alan took their positions on opposite sides of the monster getting ready to attack it once it charged at Joey who was activating some of his spells to boost his defense. Watching while sitting on a tree limb above them she was surprised to see the boar that had charged at Joey with full force was stopped in its tracks by his shield giving Hara and Alan a perfect chance to attack. Dashing forward with great speed Hara had struck the boar's ribs with so much force she punctured its skin sending blood splatting around her while Alan had used his weapon to break one of the boar's legs. Receiving so much damage the flame boar backed up and the fire on its fur blazed. While its slobber burned the ground as it hit it. It's going to shoot fire get back? Joey yelled as he slammed his shield into the ground and tried to hide his massive body behind it preparing for the coming attack. Taking her chance to be useful Alice used her rift warp and stood in front of Joey taking out her scythe and infusing it with the wind element as she spun it in her hands blocking the fire that was being continually spit her way sending it flying around her protecting him. As soon as the boar attack was finished she leapt into the air landing on top of it and slit the boar's throat causing it to fall to the ground and its fire to extinguish. That was close, I didn't know if you could handle being hit by that attack so I blocked it. Alice said jumping off the boar. I would have taken some damage but nothing too serious, thank you for your help. Joey replied happily, thankful his shoulders didn't get burned again. Just. How many elements can you use? Hara asked, looking pretty impressed. I. Can use fire, wind, shadow, and the light elements. Alice replied putting away her weapon ignoring the dumbfounded expressions they showed hearing what she could use. That is certainly very rare. We should drag the boar back to the settlement and get ready to bring it to Jurgen. We will leave in the morning. Alan said happy the hunt went so smoothly. 75 Kingdom or Jurgen. Are you ready to go? We are about to head towards Jurgen. Alan asked Alice while she was still relaxing on the oddly comfortable bed stuffed with feathers. I'm coming, your beds are so comfortable though I could lay here forever and still be happy. Alice replied slowly rolling to her side to get off the bed. Stretching her arms she used the monarch's ring to change back into her normal clothes which surprised Alan and amazed Sora who had just walked into the room. Whoa, that's so cool, can you teach me to do that? Sora said, running up to Alice who smiled and kneeled down to rub her head. Maybe when you get older and do your best as NYX's follower I will find a way of teaching you how to do it. Alice replied with a smile curious what Sora's element was now that she thought about it. What is Sora's element? Alice asked while looking at Alan. We do not know yet, she has not been tested yet. The test for kids is kind of expensive so we have not had the chance to do it. Only royalty and nobles have their kids tested since it usually costs one gold. Alan said, feeling bad he hasn't been able to get his baby girl the test. Just that much? I could pay for her test if you want. 
Alice said, digging into her storage and pulling out a few gold coins and offering them to him. Consider this a payment for treating me so well and an investment into the future of Sora. I can get the test now? Sora asked curiously, seeing Alice hand her father the money. It would seem so. Alan replied baffled by how casually she was able to pull out that much money and just hand it over. Yai yai yai, Sora said happily, giving her father a hug and running off outside to tell her sister and the others the good news. Are you really sure it is okay to give me this much money? Alan asked, still looking at the three gold coins she had given him. I have a few holy coins, this much is not a problem, Alice replied with a smile before leaving the house to join the others. Pausing a bit and putting the money away Alan started to wonder just who Alice really was. While an envoy would normally have money having more than one holy coin is something not many could ever hope to see. Is it true that you are paying for Sora to get her elemental tests? Hara asked curiously while trying to keep Sora from running around too much. Yeah, I just gave Alan three gold coins. Think of it as a gift from NYX if you want. Alice replied, playing the role of envoy. Maybe I should have gone with NYX as well. Hara said a little louder than she realized. Don't you think our god will be mad if he hears those words? Joey said, giving her a nudge causing Hara's face to go pale realizing she just said that out loud. I am sure that NYX would be happy to have you, but you should stick with the god you serve for now. Alice replied with a smile as Sora ran up to her and held on to her hand. All right, since everyone is ready I guess we should get going. Alan said, getting their mounts ready. What are those? Alice asked curiously looking at the weird feathery creature on two legs. These beasts are called Tuller, they might look like a bird but they have no wings. However there is no faster mount around, we should be able to reach Jurgen shortly after nightfall riding them. Joey said walking over and jumping on the back of one. Daddy can I please ride with Alice? Sora asked, pulling on Alan's sleeve and looking hopeful. You don't want to ride with me this time? Alan asked, looking a little sad. No, I wanna ride with Alice. Sora replied with more SAS than her father was used to. Fine. Alan said, feeling defeated. Helping Sora sit on the tuller with her seated in the front Alice felt a little sorry for Alan who just wanted his daughter's attention. So are there normally any monsters or dangers we need to watch out for on the trip? Alice asked curious what other monsters would be in the area and along their path since Sora was with them. Normally yes but since we are riding on Tuller we should be fine since if something does try to attack the Tuller we'll just speed up until they lose the thing chasing them, plus you are here so I think we should be pretty safe. Hara replied pointing out how fast they were going. I guess that is a good point. Alice replied over Sora who was holding her mouth open and humming into the air. Close your mouth Sora or you'll end up swallowing a bug? Hara yelled out trying to get her attention. After chatting and riding for a few hours Alice and the group finally came into view of Jurgen. To her astonishment Jürgen was almost eight times the size of Samaria with outer walls that looked like they were only decorations since she was able to see into the kingdom clearly as it towered over its walls. You say the towers on the left side of the kingdom? That is where the various churches are and that will be where we are going. Alan said after seeing Alice's eyes wide in shock from the sight of Jürgen. Is the black one NYX's church? Alice asked curiously. That would be Ozia's church, NYX's would be the one next to it. Alan replied again as they got closer to the entrance to the kingdom. Looking over to the side of the black church she was able to see one slightly smaller but made out of a material that looked like it was devouring the light around it causing it to look like it was in the shade. Halt! A guard which had scales over his arms and small curved horns on his head said loudly as they approached the gate. What kind of race is he? Alice thought to herself quietly. Who do you think you are racing to the gates like this huh? The horned man said looking angry. I think I am racing to see your mother you old bastard. Alan retorted causing Alice to dart her head his direction wondering what in the world was wrong with him for saying something like that. Haha, we both know my mother would love to see you again Alan. So what brings you here today? The guard said with a smile shaking Alan's hand as he got off the tiller. Seeing the sudden change of direction in their conversation Alice sighed in relief knowing they were not going to fight. I have brought some things to sell as well as I am getting my daughter tested today if possible. Alan replied proudly. Hey Alan, what do you mean you are getting her tested? Did you become a bandit? My mother really will eat you if she hears about this. Relax Jack, I am doing no such thing. It was a gift from NYX's envoy here, she was the one who provided the funds for my daughter's test. Alan replied happily while pointing Alice out who was helping Sora get off the tiller. Grabbing Alan's arm and bringing him out of earshot from the others in his group Jack looked serious. Alan you know I trust you but you should know that NYX already has an envoy. That person is even here in the kingdom. 
Have you ever heard of there being two envoys for one God? I know that you are right, but that little girl has proven herself to at least be highly blessed by NYX. I think she might be some noble's daughter or royalty. She gave me three gold coins and mentioned having some holy coins on her person. Who else would have that much money on them? Alan replied in a hushed voice. I guess you are right. I will let the guards know not to cause trouble for her until we determine her identity. Jack replied before giving Alan a hug and walking back over to the others. Sorry about that. I just had to talk with Alan here for a bit about some family stuff. Please enjoy your stay in Jurgen. Jack said motion in for the other guards to open the gate to let them all in. What was all that about? Alice asked curiously knowing the conversation was not about family. I wouldn't worry about it. Anyway would you like to follow us to the Mages Guild to get Sora registered for her test? After that we plan to head to NYX's church and have her try to gain her first blessing. Alan asked. Please see come Alice? Sora said holding her hand and trying to pull her closer to their group. I would love to join you? Alice replied happily. 76 Sora Estes. Having made their way to the Mages Guild Alice was barely surprised to see how grand the building looked. The building itself was made from white brick and had the guild's flag draped over the front while the top of the building was shaped to a point with a metal rod sticking out of it. What is with the rod at the top? Alice asked curiously. That is so the researchers at the guild can draw power from lightning strikes to help them further develop more advanced spells, or so I'm told. Joey replied as they made their way into the overly decorated lobby where people in white robes walked around and chatted with each other. Is there anything I can help you with today? A elderly woman dressed in a blue robe asked while walking up to them. Ah yes, we are here to have my daughter get her elemental tests done. Where do we sign her up? Alan asked as politely as he could. I can take you to register but are you sure you have the fee that is required to test a child? She asked, not hiding the fact she was judging how they looked wearing worn down armor and cheap weapons. We have the money. Alan replied, pulling out the golden coin. Follow me. But so you know if it is found out that you obtained the money in illegal ways our guild will come after you and your family. She replied, leading the way for them. No need to be such a bitch. Alice said under her breath not liking how rudely she was treating her new friends. Excuse me? The woman said, turning to face Alice. I said there is no need to be so rude to people who are here to have their child tested. Alice said, taking a step closer to her. You have no right to speak with me this way. I will explain things for you since you seem to accompany such people and do not know any better. White robes are people with one element and the lowest ranked members in our guild. Blue robes like myself have two elements and are higher ranked here in the kingdom not just in the guild here. I would watch your mouth if I was you little girl. The lady sneered. Oh, I guess mages guild ranks go based on how many elements you can control here? That would make me your superior. You should watch your own mouth. Alice replied, getting annoyed with the arrogant elderly women. Ha 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 ha, that is funny, do you know how rare it is to have more than two elements little girl? That is not a lie you can just go around telling people. The woman laughed thinking Alice was trying to gain ground on her through a lie. What is happening here Karen? Another man in a blue robe said, walking over after hearing the dispute between her and Alice. This girl here thinks that she has three elements and even dares to call herself my superior. Karen replied, still smiling. My name is Wayne, would you mind showing me your elements? I will apologize for my colleague after seeing you are indeed who you say you are. Wayne said politely. Seeing Alice grin at the challenge Alan pulled his daughter closer to him not knowing exactly what to expect from Alice at this point. Causing the wind around her to swirl around her Alice slowly lifted off the ground as she created a fire in one hand and pulled her scythe out of her inventory with the other. Ready for your proof? Finishing her question Alice she infused the light element into her weapon causing a blinding light and disappearing from the room altogether once the light went away. Where did Alice go daddy? Sora asked, looking around looking for her. Coming out of the woman's shadow behind her, Bushi whispered in her ear causing Karen to jump forward and then released her mana's pressure to show off a little. Who dares cause trouble in my guild? A slim man with pointed ears ran out of one of the rooms carrying a staff with a red gem at the top ready to attack. Falling on her as Karen looked at Alice with fear, I'm sorry. I am sorry as well Miss Alice it was. Wayne said with a small bow of his head remembering what Sora called her. Damn it don't ignore me, the guild master said, rushing over to them red in the face. That was not our intention Zan. I am pleased to tell you that a special person has graced us with a visit today. Wayne said politely, trying to calm Zen down. Your employee is very rude. We are only here to get this child her elemental test. Alice said walking over to them not wanting to waste the momentum she just created. Zan, 
I am so sorry I didn't know she was serious, Karen yelled out, not wanting to be kicked from her position in the guild. Quiet woman, someone just explain to me what in the hell is going on here, Zan replied, still annoyed. This young lady is here to get her sister a test I assume, Karen was a bit rude seeing how they were dressed which caused Alice here to challenge her authority. Karen decided to issue a challenge of her own which caused Alice to prove that she did indeed have four elements. Wayne replied, Are you crazy? There is no way someone has four elements and I do not know about it? Zen replied before going quiet, realizing Wayne just told him that the little girl had just proven how many elements she could control. I can give another demonstration if you wish, Alice replied. Alice is really strong isn't she daddy? Sora said looking at Alice with admiration. Yes baby girl just be quiet for now. Alan said, patting her head feeling out of place in the current situation. That will not be necessary. Through the shock of hearing four elements and you having proved yourself I somehow managed to embarrass myself. I apologize for that, my name is Zan, what brings you to my guild today? Zan asked almost changing personalities on the spot. Ahem, to get the little girl there tested. Wayne said, wondering just how scatterbrained the guild master could be. I can take your group and personally test the little girl myself? I hope this will soothe any misunderstandings you may have with my employee, Zan said, handing his staff to Wayne to hold as Alice and her group followed Zan into his office. Grabbing some crystal balls off the shelf in his office and setting them on his desk Zan sat in his chair and faced them. Each of these balls represent the most common elements, I can offer these tests for free today however if you wish to have her tested for the more rare of elements I will have to charge since the crystals are difficult to obtain. Bring them all out I will pay for the whole test. Alice said sitting on one of the chairs close by and crossing her legs. I am afraid that it would be impossible to test her for everything right now since we do not have any nature or shadow element crystals right now. However I will gladly grab the others so please give me a moment. Zan said, opening a hidden door behind his bookshelf in the office and leaving them alone in the office. Alice I can't let you pay for that kind of test? Alan said looking worried. I am paying because I want to do so. Sora, do you want to test on all of them? Alice asked with a smile. Yeah, Sora said, happy to get a say in what was happening. There you go, it will make Sora happy. Alice replied to Alan with a smile knowing he couldn't say no anymore with his daughter's happiness on the line. Fine, Alan replied defeated. Bringing a few more balls and setting them on his tables and sat back down and looked to Sora, okay all you have to do is place your right hand on a ball and close your eyes, if nothing happens we can just move to another ball so do not get upset okay. Okay I I Sora said, walking over to one of the crystals and closing her eyes after placing her hand on it. Grabbing the first crystal nothing happened so Zen helped to move her hand to the next one in line. After repeating this process Alice was able to see a tear fall along the side of her face. Don't be upset Sora just keep calm and believe in yourself. Alice whispered, kneeling down next to her to cheer Sora on. Moving over to the next ball it lights up brightly causing Sora's hair to sway around, it looks like she has the wind element. Hearing Zan's words Sora smiled happily knowing she was just like Alice, moving along the other balls the test ended with Sora only having the one element. Congratulations Sora, you have the wind element and as part of the payment you are allowed to have a teacher for the first year. However you must move here to the kingdom in order for us to train you. Alice, would you mind staying behind? I wish to talk with you. Zan said as Alice gave him the fee for the test. Sorry, we have to go to the church so that Sora can get her first blessing. If I have time I will come back and speak with you, Alice replied as they left his office to go to the church. Humming as she walked holding Alice's hand Sora looked very happy with the results of her test. Thank you again Alice, you really didn't have to pay for all of that. Here you can take your money back since we didn't end up getting to use it, Alan said as they walked to the churches. Keep the money, as long as Sora is happy I am happy, Alice said as the churches came into view. I wonder if I can get mom to help Sora out some. Alice thought to herself as they came into view of NYX's church. Mom are you there? 77 Sora's blessing. Having arrived at NYX's church Alice was surprised to see that Xion was there as well talking with a short man with dark green hair and pointed ears and dressed in a camo robe and a mask covering his nose and mouth. Making eye contact with Alice he ran over to her and bowed his head, Goddess Alice I am so happy to see you here. What brings you here today, Goddess? Sora said looking at Alice curiously with the same expression as her father and the rest of their group. Are you crazy? Do not go saying unnecessary things. I am here today with some friends so their daughter can pray to NYX and receive a blessing. 
Alice replied now trying to think of a way to explain what he just said in front of Alan and the others. Splendid, why not take her for yourself though, Xion said before whispering the question in her ear. I agree we should get started right away, Alice replied ignoring his question. I hear that we have someone coming to receive their first blessing and offer their first prayer today, is that correct? The man said, having been standing next to them without much notice from the rest of the group. Me? I have prayed to NYX lots but daddy says I have to pray here for NYX to be happy and bless me, Sora said happily. How cute, I am sure NYX is very happy to receive your prayers. I am Okamai Azure, NYX's envoy, would you like to come with me to begin your prayer? Okamai replied, crouching to get eye level with Sora. Yeah, Sora said, offering her hand to him to hold. Thinking for a moment Okamai gave in and took her hand and led her to the altar in front of the statue of NYX and began to teach Sora how to properly pray to NYX as Alice and the others took a seat and watched. What did you mean when you called Alice a goddess? Hara finally spoke up after not being able to contain her curiosity anymore. Giving Xi'an a look Alice made it clear he should keep his mouth shut and come up with a good excuse. Ah, I just find Alice to be as beautiful as a goddess and so I refer to her as such. Xi'an replied giving an awkward smile. Oh, Hara replied and went back to watching her sister pray. You like the little girl a lot don't you? NYX said startling Alice who was not expecting NYX to talk to her. Yeah, I am pretty fond of her. She is praying to get her first blessing today and I wanted to ask if you could do something special for her as a favor to me. Alice replied, happy to know that her mother is okay. She is a very pure child. I will give her a blessing but you need to keep an eye on the child as much as you can after this. I will also be going back to sleep for a short time so if you really need to contact me just come wake me up okay. NYX replied thank you, Alice replied now in a great mood. Just as soon as NYX finished talking with Alice her statue turned pitch black and the shadow of the statue slowly crept towards Sora who had her eyes shut praying. The shadow slowly covered Sora's body until Sora was pitch black and was almost completely out of sight causing Alan to stand up worried. Alice what is going on? Alan asked, trying not to panic. Don't worry I just asked NYX for a favor to help Sora out, it will be over soon. Alice replied trying to calm him down. As the seconds passed by Okamai stood and watched Sora in amazement, this was the first time he had ever seen NYX give such a show to someone offering their first prayer at the altar. Seeing the spectacle all of the people in the church gathered around in silence to watch and see what blessing the little girl will gain from such a grand display. Everyone I would ask as your envoy to please sit and be quiet until the blessing has finished being received. Okamai said loud enough for everyone to hear. Alice what is going on? Why is it taking so long? Alan asked in a whisper. I do not know what blessing NYX is giving her, all I know is NYX said she would do me a favor and give her something special. Alice replied quietly. As the church fell completely silent the shadow covering Sora's body slowly faded and was absorbed by her bringing her back into full view revealing Sora to be asleep in the praying position. Sora, wake up dear your blessing has been received would you mind telling me what it was you were given? Okamai said, holding one of his hands up to keep the people in the church seated as he woke her up. Rubbing her eyes and sitting on the ground Sora yawned and looked at Okamai and nodded, I was having a dream where I met NYX and she was showing me how to use the shadows like Alice, she said that she is really happy I picked her and that I can use the shadows as much as I want now, it was a really nice dream. Hearing her words some of the people in the church began whispering to the people beside them as they all looked at her as if it was a miracle. My daughter has two elements now, Alan said quietly, thankful he was able to meet Alice who he held responsible for the good fortune his daughter was experiencing. You have all heard it, Sora has been looked upon with high favor by our goddess. Should she stay in the kingdom, each of you should do your best to honor NYX's wishes and treat this little girl with the utmost respect, Okamai said to the people while walking Sora back to her family. I am like you now, Sora said, running over to Alice and jumping onto her lap with a big smile. Yes you are, I will show you how to use your elements later on okay, Alice replied, rubbing Sora's head happy to hear she was given such a special gift. Miss Alice do you think you have some time to speak with me? Okamai said politely, wanting to confirm for himself the things that Xi'an had told him about her real identity. I had planned on going and spending the rest of the day with Sora and her family. I am sorry, Alice replied turning him down. How about we just meet you at the Mages Guild when you are done with your chat Alice? Alan said, offering her a way to do both. That is a great idea, we will see you after you're done Alice. Joey said, picking Sora up and leaving with the others. I guess you have time now, 
Okamai said with a smile and began walking to the statue waiting by it for Alice to follow him. If we were just going to talk by the statue we could have talked where I was earlier. Alice replied, trying not to be annoyed. Don't be silly, we are not talking here, this is just the entrance. Okamai replied before sinking into the shadow cast by the statue of NYX. Seeing him disappear Alice did the same figuring she could figure out where he went once she was in the shadows. Seeing that there was a closed off room below the statue she decided she would check there first. I knew you would be able to find this place with ease, now we can finally talk without anyone hearing. Okamai replied, taking a seat in a comfortable looking chair. What is it that you wanted to talk about? Alice replied, taking a seat as well and sinking into the cushion. Xi'an is not one to lie when it comes to these things so that is why I find it so strange he believes you to be a real goddess. That is what I mainly wanted to talk about, could you please shed some light to this story for me? Okamai said while looking curious. Since, you are my mother's envo I guess it wouldn't hurt to tell you. I am a demigod however I do not have enough power yet to be of much use so I am laying low as long as I can. Xi'an was there when I first received my power of belief, I honestly wish he didn't have such a big mouth. Alice replied feeling a little relieved to finally say it out loud to another person. Is that so? You want me to believe this? Okamai replied with a doubtful look. I don't really care if you believe me. Xi'an knows and has seen it as well. I am the one who asked my mother to give Sora a special blessing and look at what happened. If you need more proof than that you can try to ask NYX when she wakes up from her nap. Alice replied before leaving the room and walking through the streets to go and find Sora. 78 Rage and Tears Finally catching back up with Alan and the others Alice ran up to them and picked Sora up and spun her in the air. I am back. Alice said, surprising Sora. Yai yai. Sora laughed as Alice spun her a few more times and set her down. So what did he want to talk about? Hara asked curiously. Nothing special, I guess he had heard about me being an envoy and wanted to speak with me a little. Alice replied as they walked. Well since we still have time to waste we had planned on going to upgrade our armor and weapons, would you like to come with us? Joey asked, pointing out one of the shops. Sure I haven't had the chance to go to one of those in a long time. Alice replied as they entered the blacksmith's shop. Would you mind looking after Sora while we talk with the blacksmith here? Alan asked, knowing Alice would probably agree giving him some free time to properly pick out some new items. Sure I can teach her a bit on how to use her elements. Alice replied, taking Sora's hand and leading her to a bench to sit on while they waited on them to finish their shopping. I wanna learn how to fly? Sora said excitedly. Haha, slow down hun you still have a long way to go before you can do something like that. First you need to be able to control the air around you and bend it to your will. Alice replied, enjoying the thought of teaching her little friend. How can I do that? Sora asked, tilting her head a little. Close your eyes and do what I tell you to do okay? Alice said waiting for Sora to close her eyes and wait for instructions. Now that your eyes are closed and feel the breeze pass by you, I want you to try thinking of making the breeze go faster okay. Keeping her eyes shut Sora did what Alice had told her and tried her hardest to force the air to go faster. Don't force it, relax and imagine someone is blowing the wind. Relaxing more Sora managed to make the wind go a little faster around her picking up pace the more she relaxed and got used to the feeling. Good girl. Now try to make the wind swirl around in the palm of your hand concentrate on keeping the wind where I touch. Alice said, picking Sora's hand up and lightly touching the palm of her hand. Seeing Sora relaxed and trying her hardest to be able to do it Alice sat back and gave her a little boost by getting Sora started. Making the wind swirl slowly in Sora's hand and slowly pulling away her influence on the element, Alice was happy to see that Sora was managing to keep the wind going on her own. Keep doing this until you can open your eyes and keep the wind going. Get familiar with this feeling if you start feeling weak you have to stop. Alice instructed, noticing Hara glancing over at them in between looking through various weapons. After having purchased all their new equipment and repairing what they wanted, Alan, Hara, and Joey joined Alice and Sora. How long has she been asleep? Hara asked, sitting next to Sora. Not very long, she used up a lot of her mana practicing what I was showing her. Alice replied with a smile moving some of Sora's hair out of her face while she rested. There she is, a man yelled out pointing at Sora through the crowd of people in the street. What is going on? Alan asked, not knowing who the man was pointing at. Who knows, they are probably referring to me. Alice replied standing up and waiting for them to come up and confront her. Make way the royal guard is coming through. He yelled out again as he and roughly 20 men followed behind him. What do you want? Alyssi asked, stepping forward. This is none of your concern just get out of my way. 
he said rudely as he pushed Alice to the side and stood in front of the sleeping Sora. Hold on now, what business do you have with my daughter? Alan said, moving between him and his daughter placing a hand on the man's chest while Hara and Joey stood next to him to protect her. If you know what is good for you then you will remove your hand. Another of the men stepped forward with a hand on his weapon. I am her father and any business with her is my business as well. Now tell me what is going on here. Alan replied bluntly while taking his hand off the man and looking at the other. Can you all calm down? This is not the way to accomplish what we came to do peacefully. Take a step back Bruce. A tall man in a black robe said while stepping through the soldiers. I am sorry for Bruce's way of doing things, he is a military man born and raised. My name is Quinn, I am a member of a faction flowing through all the kingdoms. Our influence here is vast and we seek out talented youth to train them to fight for their nation. When we heard of the young lady here named Sora I knew I must take action. A god never gives an element out like that and seeing that your daughter was the receiver of such a blessing it stands to reason her fate is grand. Quinn said with a smile. My daughter is going nowhere. She is staying with her family. There is nothing more for you to say so kindly leave us alone. Alan replied coldly, picking up on an uneasy atmosphere around the man. I do not wish to cause any issue with you as her father, however our goal is one that must be obtained. Quinn replied, tapping Bruce's shoulder and walking back through the man to the back. Getting the signal he hit Alan with the hilt of his sword so quickly that Joey and Hara almost couldn't see him move. Watching Alan fall to the ground unconscious Hara and Joey drew their weapons only to have to back down, feeling the soldiers' blades already at their throats. Grab the girl and let go, the family poses no threat to you. Quinn said, watching and waiting on them to have hands on Sora before leaving. Touch her and your leader will no longer have a head. Alice said hatefully trying her hardest to contain her rage as her side's blade rested firm against Quinn's neck causing a small stream of blood to trickle down his neck onto his robe. I am afraid you do not know what it is you are doing girl, if you want to continue to keep your life remove your weapon from my neck. The soldiers will not stop even if I die, Quinn replied nodding for Bruce to grab the girl anyways. Remembering what Lord Kira had given her she pulled out his token and threw it on the ground in front of Quinn for him to see. It looks like you do not know who I am either. Tell your men to back away, so you have some rank in the demon's army. That means nothing to me. Quinn replied with a smile as he gave another nod to Bruce. Nooo let me go, daddy, para help, Alyssi, Sora cried out as Bruce grabbed her arms and pulled her to her feet, waking her up. Hearing Sora cry she was no longer able to hold herself back, Alice yanked her blade back severing Quinn's head while releasing her mana's pressure and taking her wings out without realizing it. Last chance unhand her. Alice said in a low voice, getting ready to attack and kill each and every one of the men in a soldier's uniform around her. Quest, save the girl time limit, 115,59,59 reward, title failure, Sora's death looking at the quest Alice's heart felt like it stopped seeing the meaning of her failure in the quest. Not giving it another thought Alice rushed forward slicing the first man in half at the waist, moving on to the second man Alice infused her scythe with the fire element making it look like she was throwing fire at her enemies with every swing of her weapon which draw a large crowd of people around to watch the chaos. Having killed half of the soldiers in their group Alice was able to see that Bruce and Sora were nowhere to be seen. Sora Alice screamed out unconsciously boosting the volume of her voice so loud that the entire kingdom was able to hear her cries. Quickly escape! The remaining men yelled out, scattering through the crowd of people in attempts to get away from their killer. Running over to Alan who was still unconscious on the ground where Hara and Joey sat with their heads down worried and scared for Sora. You have to get my sister back please I will do anything? Hara begged with tears in her eyes grabbing onto Alice as she crouched next to them. Tell Alan I am sorry I couldn't save her. I won't come back without Sora. Alice replied, eyes burning with rage and tears. 79 Control. Rushing off in anger forgetting all about withdrawing her mana's pressure, Alice passed by the crowd of people making it clear with the look in her eyes that whoever tries to stop her will lose their heads. I'm going to get you back Sora just wait for me? Alice thought to herself as the air around her slowly started catching fire before taking out her wings and flying high into the sky above the kingdom. Whoever has information about the man named Quinn meet me at the church of NYX. If your information holds value then you might just earn a holy coin. Alice shouted out as loud as she could with the assistance of her wind element so that everyone below her could hear her. Flying off towards the church as soon as she said what she needed to say, she landed moments later to a crowd of people forming around the entrance to NYX's church where Okamai was standing, preventing people from rushing inside the doors. 
What in the world is going on Alice? Why are you offering such a high reward for information about Quinn? Okamai said, rushing over to Alice wondering what could cause her to act so rashly. Just give me some space and I will explain. Alice said coldly, unable to get rid of the hatred she was feeling. Seeing her anger Okamai took a step back and waited for Alice to say what she needed to say. I called you all here for the chance to make a large sum of money in exchange for valid information about the whereabouts of Quinn's hideout. His men have stolen my friend, someone I hold close to me. Quinn is now dead but I still need to know where they take their so-called talented youth to train them. The first person to give me information leading me to where my friend is will get a holy coin. Alice said, pulling the large coin out of her inventory and holding it above her head for everyone to see. I know where they take the kids. Fuck off. I know exactly where it is. The people in the crowd around her began arguing with each other over who would get to tell her the information they had first in hopes of getting the holy coin that had just been shown to them. To most people a coin like that was enough to last them until they died, now they had the opportunity to get one just by giving some information that was fairly common knowledge to most people. Alice, if that is all you needed to know you should have come to me. Even children know where the place you speak of is located. Okamai said, causing the crowd of people to get angry and start cursing at him. Silence? Alice yelled out wanting to hear what Okamai had to say. It will be easier if you just follow me. Okamai replied sinking into the shadows so that no one but Alice would be able to follow him. Following Okamai she realized this was the first time she ever had to chase after someone using the same kind of movement she thought only she was able to do for the longest time. Coming out of a shadow in the same place as Okamai they stood in front of a very expensive looking building bearing the flags of a few different kingdoms with the flag of the faction itself as the middle one above the entrance showing various symbols of the elements as well as two swords crossed in the center. This is the building that Quinn and the soldiers come often, only members are permitted to enter. Even I as an envoy would face hostility and be attacked if I were to try and force my way in, Okamai said, trying to let Alice know she should not be too reckless when trying to get her friend back. I do not care who stands in my way, if I do not save her she will die, Alice said, feeling that hatred boiling back up to the surface. How do you know she will die? Their methods may be a bit cruel but they do indeed train the children. As far as I know no child they have taken has ever died, Okamai replied after taking a moment to think about their faction. I have my ways, Alice said before remembering she had a spell that would allow her to control someone as long as she had the mana to keep control over them. You can go back now, I will find her on my own, Alice replied, waiting until someone left the building to hit them with her spell. What do you plan on doing? Okamai asked, wondering just what was going on in her head. Just do me a favor and go back to whatever it was you were doing before I caused you trouble. Trust me I have this under control. Alice said flying up high enough people wouldn't notice her but low enough she could watch the building underscore 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 on what should we do Bruce? Quinn is dead, this branch of the faction no longer has a higher up now. Some of the others are fearful that the woman who attacked us will come and slaughter us. Jace, a skinny man with blonde hair and blue eyes said trying to hide his fear after hearing how the others got sliced in half by the little girl's friend. Don't worry about her, as long as we have her friend I don't think she will attack us. The little girl named Sora has favor with a goddess so we should at least try to turn her over to our cause. Bruce said while opening the door behind him revealing Sora tied up and gagged so she couldn't yell and scream. We still do not have a leader. What do we do? Jace asked curiously. It's obvious that I will be taking over now, spread the word to the others that I am taking on Quinn's position until the other faction leaders can make a choice on a replacement. Until then continue everything as normal. Bruce said before closing the door and walking over to Sora who was trying her hardest to flail around and escape from the ropes she was tied up in. Relax little one, would you like me to take off your rope and gag? Bruce said, trying to act friendly to her. Shaking her head violently. Sora tried even harder to escape, still able to remember what they did to her father just moments before. It is not very nice to refuse a kind offer to a little girl. Bruce said, pulling the gag off as Sora took the chance to bite his hand as hard as she could. Forgetting to hold back his anger, Bruce picked Sora up and threw her against the wall near the bed, knocking Sora unconscious. Fine brat take a fucking nap then. You better hope you wake up in a better mood otherwise I will just get rid of you. Bruce said as he left the room slamming the doors behind him. 
underscore 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 on after waiting for what felt like an hour Alice finally found someone leaving the building flying above him she waited until he reached a spot where she could attack and question him without people seeing her Seeing him enter an alleyway between two buildings Alice dove down not wanting to miss her chance at getting all the information she could out of him before making him her puppet. Who who are you? Jace asked in a shaky voice, feeling her killing intent as if it was touching him and grabbing his neck. You do not deserve to know my name. Your people took someone very important to me and I want her back. You are going to tell me what I want to know, Alice said coldly, taking a step closer to him causing him to fall on his ass and pee a little. I will tell you. I will tell you, please don't kill me, Jace begged trying to scoot back as she slowly walked closer to him, move again and you die, I can just wait on someone else to leave the building, now tell me where she is being kept, tell me everything you know about Sora, Alice said, pulling out her weapon ready to send his head flying if he decided not to talk, I, I only know that Bruce and the others left with a man named Quinn Valentine to go and bring a special girl in for training so that she would be able to fight for our cause. Then you kill Quinn and Bruce returns with the little girl and is keeping her in a room attached to the main office in the building. I do not know anything more than that I swear, Jay said, shaking in fear seeing some blood still left on her scythe. You are going to help me rescue her, Alice said, grabbing him by the neck as her shadow slowly vanished while wrapping his body and taking control of him. Blinking Jace realized he could no longer move other than his eyes, his body would not do what he wanted it to do. Instead he found himself standing and walking back towards the faction building. Please God save me, Jace thought after realizing he was dead no matter what happened at this point. Looking at the quest window Alice grinned her teeth seeing the time limit countdown. Time remaining, 113.23.01 Please do not let this take more than 4 days, Alice said before concentrating on controlling Jace who was now walking up the stairs back towards the office where Bruce was. 80 Conflict and Death Walking into the room where Bruce was still currently upset about being bit, Jace tried his hardest to make his body turn around so that he could avoid the conflict about to start in hopes of living another day. Jace what are you doing back here? Didn't I give you an order? Bruce said standing up and walking over to Jace. Jace wanted to reply but the words wouldn't come out instead his body walked past Bruce and opened the doors allowing Alice to see Sora lying unconscious on the bed still tied up. Grrrah. Re. Leash. Er. Jace said almost painfully with Alice pushing the limit of the spell forcing Jace to speak for her. Ha 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 ha, why would I do that? What is wrong with you, we have done this many times already. Bruce laughed while pushing Jace away from the room and stepping between him and the door closing it again. I while, Kel, you, Jace said mimicking the words Alice was forcing him to say, that even funnier, you should leave while I still have the patience to let you off with what you just said. Bruce said, looking serious placing his hand on Jace's shoulder and gripping hard. Making Jace pull out his dagger Jace quickly tried stabbing Bruce in the throat. Seeing the blade coming Bruce put his palm in the way letting his palm get stabbed through stopping Jace's attack. Hey, you really must want to die. Looking at Bruce with fear Jace prayed to his god as fast as he could knowing his end was near. Pulling the blade out of his palm Bruce slowly pushed the dagger through Jace's chest lodging it into his heart killing Jace who was now bleeding out on the floor. Seeing the shadow leave his body and quickly make its way out of the room Bruce realized Jace was being controlled. Looks like it is time to leave this place since the demon girl knows where the little girl is. Bruce said while wrapping his hand tight in cloth to stop the bleeding. Underscore 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 unfuck. Alice yelled out realizing she messed up a great opportunity to get Sora back. Taking to the sky again Alice waited for another person to leave the building so she could try again. Seeing Bruce leave the building surrounded by a small army of troops and a strange cloaked man beside him Alice decided to bet it all on the moment and rushed down to try and swipe Sora off Bruce's shoulder and fly away. Flying down Alice crashed hard into a barrier being cast by the cloaked man. Looking up Bruce smiled knowing that as long as the mage he had with him was around very few people would be able to reach him giving him all the freedom in the world to walk around without worry. Silas, do it. Bruce said, giving the cloaked man the signal to get rid of Alice. Lifting a hand up towards Alice, Silas opened his hand slowly. 
Wind cannon as soon as the words left his mouth the wind violently formed into a ball in his hand and launched at Alice with almost no time to react. Hitting Alice hard the spell sent Alice flying further up into the air. If not for her wings she would be dead as soon as she hit the ground. Flying back to where they were Alice cursed seeing that Sora was nowhere to be found, the men that captured her had all but vanished. Alice, follow us, Alan yelled out riding his tuller through the kingdom quickly in order to try and catch up to Sora and the men that took her. Not wasting any time Alice flew above Alan and Hara keeping pace with their mounts as they weaved in and out of the streets and people. As they approached the northern gate's exit to leave the kingdom Alice was able to see Sora being tossed into a crate on the back of a wagon being pulled by two large tuller. Seeing Alice catching up to them Bruce jumped onto the wagon and whipped the reins making the tuller quickly take off keeping distance between Alice and himself quest save Sora, being chased down Sora's captor feels threatened time remaining. 112 colon 15 colon 10 backslash u 003 e 90 backslash u 003 e 80 backslash u 003 e 70 backslash u 003 e 55 backslash u 003 e 32 backslash u 003 e 12 hours 5 minutes and 20 seconds seeing the timer rapidly decrease Alice begins to panic even more with Sora's life hanging on the line if she fails. Picking up speed she starts to close the gap on them while getting further away from Alan and Hara who were struggling to keep up. Silas a little help? Bruce yelled out wanting to break free of his pursuer knowing if things kept going at this rate he would be caught by Sora's friend. I'm on it. Silas said now standing in the wagon and pulling out an old wooden rod that acted as a tool to increase his power output. Seeing him pull out the rod Alice took her scythe out as well ready to defend herself, she was not about to let herself lose sight of Sora now. Wind Cannon Silas said out loud forming a larger burst of wind to rocket at Alice who infused her wind element in her weapon and swung it hard making contact with his attack splitting it in half almost creating a tornado where she had just flown by due to the clash of wind going in opposite directions. It isn't working. Silas yelled back to Bruce while repeatedly firing off the same attack over and over at Alice was now used to deflecting him. Try something else then? Bruce yelled back as they approached the forest separating the kingdom or Jurgen from the kingdom of Nye. Slowly twirling the rod in his hand, Silas began to form a vortex behind him forcing a large amount of wind to fly at Alice while speeding up the wagon. Waking up and seeing Alice chasing after them Sora yelled out Alice. Hearing her scream Alice pushed herself to the limit trying to catch back up while fighting against the torrent of wind being sent her way, even using rift warp at her current speed was not letting her catch up any quicker than her current pace. Trying to roll off the wagon Silas had no choice but to stop his vortex and stop Sora from falling off the wagon, she was after all the whole reason he was fighting with a strange winged woman who would kill him the first chance she got. Taking her chance Alice used her full speed to catch up she was now within arm's reach of the wagon. Let her go and I let you live. Alice yelled out desperate to free Sora any way she could. Savi M. Sora yelled out, being muffled by Bruce. Back off or the girl dies. Bruce yelled out. Seeing him pulling out a dagger Alice acted without thinking, using rift warp she swiped the weapon from his hands causing him to lose control of the tiller which took a sharp turn to the right sending them all flying off the wagon as it crashed against a tree. Slowly waking up and getting up she pulled the dagger out of her leg, I must have gotten stabbed by it in the crash fuck where is Sora? Alice thought to herself and looking around her trying to find Sora as soon as she could in hopes of beating Bruce to her. You woke up just a bit too late girl, Bruce said holding Sora in his arms with another dagger held to her throat. Quest save Sora, put in a corner you force the time to expire faster time remaining. 25 minutes and 1 second seeing the timer almost up Alice went to take a step forward, don't you dare touch her? Not so fast girl. Move any further and I sever her head from her body, that is your favorite was to kill is it not? Cutting people in half, I think I might give it a try if you make any moves. Bruce said with a smile. Fine. Just please put her down and take the blade away from her neck. You win, I give up. Alice said not knowing what else to do. I have men coming to assist me from the next kingdom, the little girl will live if you just stay there until they get here. Why do you go so far for this child? I am curious. Bruce asked, trying to distract Alice with conversation and buy himself time until the other faction members meet up with him. She is like a little sister to me, I do not like to lose the people I care for. Please I am begging you just put her down. Alice begged, dropping her weapon to the ground. Haha, <laughs> why should I do that? Maybe I should make you watch your little sister die after causing me so much trouble. Bruce said with a smile hearing Tuller approaching from a distance. Quest failed no. Alice screamed in anger seeing the quest notification appear letting her know what was about to happen. Alice, 
Sora screamed back seeing her panicking as Bruce threw her to the ground and pulled out his sword and swung it hard at Sora. 